Hi, I'm Martha. Welcome to Essential Somatics. Today I'm going to talk about the difference between traditional stretching and pandiculation. But before I do that, I'd like you to have your own experience of a pandiculation. A pandiculation has three stages to it. The first is a voluntary contraction of the muscles slightly tighter than what's already there. What this does is it gives the brain a very strong sensation, good information that says, oh, these are the muscles that I want to focus on. Now the second phase is a slow controlled release of the muscles, a melting release of the muscles. And that's where the brain takes back control of the muscle length and the function. The third stage is a complete relaxation. And in that stage, the brain has a chance to integrate the sensation. Very important. First, a contraction of the muscles, tighter than what's there, followed by a slow controlled release and a complete relaxation. It's kind of like a yawn, right? So, let's do it. Most people have a lot of tension in the top of their shoulders, so let's focus there. Close your eyes, and we're going to do one shoulder at a time. Choose a shoulder, and go ahead and take that shoulder slightly up towards your ears. Contract that shoulder all the way up to the ear, tightening it slightly tighter than what's there, and then slowly release, letting it float back down. If it's jumpy, jerky, or shaky, that's sensory motor amnesia. That's where your brain has lost full control of it. Now, completely let it go. Let's do that one more time. Go ahead, come on up. Drawing it up towards your ear, tighter than what's there, and slowly letting it go. Oh, I just felt a jump. I'm going to stop right there. Stop if you feel a jump. Go ahead and recontract back. And now slowly melt all the way to the end. And let everything go. Now take a second and notice the difference between the shoulder you just pandiculated and the other shoulder. What you're noticing is sensation. Let's do the other shoulder. Go ahead and draw that shoulder all the way up towards your ear. Don't work too hard, just enough so that you can feel what you're doing. And then slowly melt that shoulder down. Oh, I have a lot of jumpiness in that shoulder. Stop. Do this with me, because I'll bet you're not much different than me. Come on back up. And then slowly melt that shoulder all the way back down. And let it go completely. One last time. Come all the way up. Drawing it up to your ear. And melting it down. And you probably feel this in your neck as well, because the top of the shoulders involves quite a few muscles. Release it all the way back down. Let everything go. Notice, have you evened out the sensation right to left? Bet you it feels pretty good. In clinical somatic education, we use pandiculation, both assisted pandiculation with a skilled practitioner and their hands-on feedback, and self-pandiculation, as in the somatic movements we teach and what you just did for yourself. And we use that in order to teach you to make lasting improvement in your ability to connect in a safe and pleasant way to your physical experience of yourself, as well as to relieve chronic muscle pain. But let's talk about the differences. Passive versus active. Stretching is generally passive. You're pulling a muscle passively into a length that you would like it to go. Now this is a great way to hurt yourself. Pandiculation is active. You're actively contracting the muscle first, then slowly lengthening it, and you're getting the brain involved. Now, and muscles don't learn unless the brain and the nervous system are involved. Effectiveness. 
Well, there's a controversy over the effectiveness of stretching. But pandiculation has been around forever and it's highly effective. It's nature's reset. And it's a brainstem action pattern that resets the connection between the central nervous system and the muscular system in both contraction and relaxation of muscles. And when you think about it, all vertebrate animals pandiculate when they get up from rest. And sometimes they do it up to 30, 40 times a day. And they do it for a reason. If they didn't, they wouldn't be present in their bodies and they just might be dinner for a predator or not be able to catch their dinner. Learning. There is no learning taking place with stretching because there's no new novel information going to the brain. It's not connected to the brain. Now, this is a really critical difference between stretching and pandiculation because pandiculation involves new learning. The contraction that initiates a pandiculation provides, provides very strong and new sensory information so that the brain can reset both its sensory information, that's, that's the awareness of the muscles, but also its motor control, the movement. Single muscles versus patterns. So stretching generally isolates muscles rather than addresses the way muscles coordinate together. They do coordinate together, they just can't act on their own singly. But pandiculation addresses the way in which we respond to stress and the activities of our lives, which is in movement patterns, not with isolated muscles. So when we pandiculate patterns of muscles, we more rapidly release that excess tension that builds up in our nervous system and in our movement, of course. And, and that tension builds up on many levels of our lives, mentally, emotionally, and physically. Because we are the only ones living in our bodies, we wind up addressing our physical as well as our psychological and emotional experiences of ourselves when we pandiculate. That's pretty powerful. Attention. Now you don't have to be attention, you don't have to be paying attention rather in order to stretch. You could be chatting to your friends while you're stretching. But with pandiculation, you really need to focus on what you're doing in order to effectively, you know, get from that voluntary contraction to the slow controlled release to the complete relaxation. Your brain needs to be focusing. So that slow controlled release actually is where your brain takes back control of the muscle length and function. Now, passive stretching affects only temporary changes in muscle length, and more often than not, muscles recontract against the stretch, whereas pandiculation allows you to make more permanent changes in your muscle length through re-education of the brain's voluntarily, voluntary ability to both sense and move the muscles. Now, lastly, let's talk about the experience of stretching versus pandiculation. Often stretching can be pretty painful, especially if you have sensory motor amnesia and you're forcing against a length that you and your brain can't voluntarily change. It can also evoke the stretch reflex, one of the most rapid spinal cord reflexes in our bodies. And this is really important. The stretch reflex is a protective reflex that protects your muscles from being injured. Now, pandiculation should never be painful. It should feel like a lovely yawn. And neurologically, pandiculation does not evoke a stretch reflex. It actually, it resets the feedback loop between the alpha and the gamma motor neurons so that your brain can, your brain can control your muscles in both the contraction and the full relaxation. Now, the good news is that you can pandiculate any movement. So if you have a favorite stretch that you really like, go ahead and turn it into a pandiculation. Contracting, slowly lengthening, and then releasing. And this will go a long way towards teaching you to make lasting improvement in your ability to self-sense, to self-correct your movement, and then to move forward towards your goals, whatever they may be. Thanks for listening. Take care.